I've tested a couple different AFRI power stations and honestly I've had pretty good luck with them. But there was a couple things that I thought that AFRI could improve and little did I expect that AFRI would actually make those improvements. And today I want to share with you the new AFRI P280. It's actually about the exact same size and look of the AFRI P210, but there are a couple differences that I noticed right away. One was, there's no compartment on top of the AFRI to put cables and things. Ah, oh, that's okay. It wasn't that big of a deal. But this power station is not your AFRI P210. The AFRI P280 has made some real big changes. One, they now have an expansion battery port, and they will be sending me an expansion battery to test out with it, so we're going to play with that when we get a chance. It is actually a 2800 watt inverter in what they call their off-grid mode, meaning that it's not acting as a UPS. In its UPS mode, it has a 2400 watt inverter. So those are some changes right there. Now on top of that, AFRI has also added a 30 amp plug on the side. And that's right over here under one of their rubber covers. And instead of six 120 volt ports, it now has four. But you know what? They did something else, and it's something that I mentioned in my last AFRI video. The prior AFRIs, the P210s, only had 500 watts of solar coming in via an XT90 connector. But the new AFRI P280 has two of those, and they are 600 watt ports for a total of 1200 watts. Folks, 1200 watts for a unit like this is frankly awesome. It's a 2,048 watt hour battery, but that means that with 1,200 watts of incoming solar, you can get that charged up in two hours or less, depending on how far you've depleted it, just off solar alone. So that's a big difference right off the bat. Now the AC input on this is 1,800 watts max, and you can adjust that using their app. I need to pause it here for just a second because there was one issue with the app that I noticed and that is that when I set it at say 300 watts to charge, I got 600. If I set it to 600, I got 900 and so on. So that is something that AFRI needs to fix. Otherwise it works fine, you just gotta know that. In order to make sure that you don't, you know, blow a circuit if you're putting it on something that can't quite handle that full 1800 watts of charging. It does have a UPS mode so you can have it plugged into the wall and then plug in a refrigerator, freezer, or whatever it is you want to have protected so that now if the power goes out, that is still going to run. Now on the front of this unit, it does have a light still and a lot of power stations have, it, have gone away from that. I like having that light. I think it's actually really handy when the power goes out. <laughs> you can actually just flip the light on, especially if you're trying to carry it through a dark house to go plug your fridge in or something like that. The other thing that they've done is they have kept the cigarette lighter style port on these. That's something that a lot of companies have done away with, but I really like having that. And they also have a 25 amp XT60 output, which is really nice as well, and two 3 amp DC type outputs. These, are, these look like the 8 millimeter style outputs. They have two USB A's, and then there are four USB-C's, two 20 watts and two 140 watt USB-C ports. So that's really nice too. I like that. I actually really like using those to charge up my cell phone. It's a lot easier than plugging a brick into the wall or something like that. So that's actually really nice. It weighs about the same as the AFRI P210 does. So it's about 55 pounds. And then of course you've got your AC input and an overload protection breaker on the side here. So very nice, good, strong, sturdy handles to pick this up and move it around. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and drain this down and test capacity. Now my way of testing capacity is using my ceramic heater which puts out about 1180 watts depending on the power station. So we're going to go ahead and set that up. I should mention also that AFRI actually gives you a cover for their power stations and that is something that I like because a lot of power stations don't come with these covers and let's just toss that over there. AFRI gives you this nice dust cover and I have found that when I store my power stations here in the shop or up in my garage they tend to get pretty dusty and so having a dust cover like this can actually protect your power station and there you go folks pretty simple 
covers everything up, especially if you close all your ports and <laughs> get this over those. And there you go. Nice dust cover. I like the fact that Afri does that. I don't think any other company has sent me a cover for a power station to test out. And honestly, I think that's a nice little added touch. It doesn't cost very much for manufacturers to do that. It's pretty inexpensive, but they're actually really nice because again, here in the shop, I get dust over everything. Out in my garage, it gets dusty. Up at the cabin, it gets dusty. So having something that I can cover it up when it's not in use, it's actually really nice. So thank you, Afri, for thinking about that. It is a little different. So kudos to Afri for that. All right, let's get this thing going. Oh, the heat coming off of that is pretty good, folks. We're pulling an incredible 1155 watts. Not bad at all. It is showing a 20 watt difference, but again, that's normal. Already down to 77%, so we're getting down there. All right, folks, I forgot that I told the AFRI not to go below 10%. And, well, that was a good test because it stopped at 10% exactly. So now we're going to have to charge it back up and see what we got to that 10%. had to go plug it back in the wall and start charging it back up. And I used a total of 1,560 watts before getting to 10%. So not bad actually, considering that's to 10% total. Had I set it to zero, I should have been able to continue going and get a lot closer to that 2,048 watt hours. But again, it looks like it's about 85% that you'll get out of that unit. What's important to understand is that the inverter takes power as well as the 1,100 plus watts I was getting at the heater. And so the heater used 1,560 watt hours which was about 85% of total capacity considering I had it stop at 10%. That means that we actually used more than that because the inverter used some of that power. So that's just something that's important to understand. But so far at 85%, that's reasonable. A lot of these units only give you about 85%, again, because of the electronics in the unit. Now, I like the fact that it stopped at 10%. We want that and it's now charging up at about 1200 watts. So I'm actually getting 1201 watts of charging and again that's something that I set on my phone. Now I will tell you this, when I go to my phone and I try to connect to that unit it is currently not connecting. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it to reset and try again and see if it will connect. But it has connected for me before and one of the things I will say about these power stations is that some of them can be a challenge to get the apps to work. Um, the Allway power station, which I was testing probably closer to a year ago and that I gave to a charity raffle. I was trying to help the individual out who won that power station and I was having a heck of a time getting the app to work. So that seems to be a common theme with some of these power stations. So as much as I do like the AFRI and that I've had this app working, well, it's currently not connecting. So I like the AFRI. I'm not a big fan of the apps, but they do have a place in this power station world. And that is allowing you to adjust the charging power that you can draw off of utility or a generator so that if you need to dial that down from the maximum to say 1200 watts like I have here, those apps allow you to do that. They also allow you to turn things on and off remotely. I don't know that that has as much benefit as just being able to adjust your charging profile. So it's nice when the apps work. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and let this run. It's going to charge at 1200 watts until we get it fully charged up. And we'll see how much power it took to fully charge back up again. And what I'll be able to do then is look at the difference. We used 1,560 watt hours to run the heater until we got to 10%. And so starting from 10% to get all the way back to 100%, we'll use a certain amount of power. And I can take the difference and get an idea of how much that inverter and all the electronics in the unit actually used. So I'm going to let that run. We're going to get it fully charged back up and then we'll see how it goes from there. All right, folks, well, we got the AFRI P280 fully charged back up again. It took 1,947 watt hours to go from 10% to 100% and fully balanced. The power station used about 10% of its total capacity running the inverter in order to run the heater. Uh, efficiency wise in terms of what I can draw off of it it seems to be about 85% all in all 
not bad, not bad at all. I, and I think, you know, I don't actually have a price on this unit yet. If I can find one, I'll pop it up right here. But I think it'll probably be pretty competitive because their AFRI P210 was as well. I think it's a pretty good unit, folks. I'm pretty impressed with it. So if you're interested in, in buying a power station, check it out. I'll put a link down below, and if I can get a discount code for them, I'll get one of those too, and I'll put it down in the description below. Well, there you have it, folks. If this helped you out, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button down below. Help the channel out. I really do appreciate it, and thank you to all my members for being here and supporting the channel. Right on. You guys are great. I love having you. It's awesome, and I'll try to do more for members as I move forward as well. So that's it, folks. I'll drop another video right over here for you to check out. Thanks again for watching. I really do appreciate it. Time for the old jarhead to go get some work done. Y'all have a great day. The old jarhead out.